be to God. Thank you, Mark. Let's pray together. As we open up your word, O oh God, this day, we ask that you would speak to us from the text, that we might hear your voice in your word, and that it might do the work of transformation in our hearts that makes us over into the image of Jesus Christ so that we can serve you well in this world. This we ask in his holy and precious name. Amen. So when things go wrong, what do you do? Think about it for a moment. When some things have gone wrong in your... I'm sorry, Wendy, am I moving out of the frame? Uh, when some things have gone wrong in your life, what is your immediate reaction to something going wrong? What is the, what is the first thing you do? Laugh. Laugh? <laughs> you are impressive. That's good. What else? What else do you do when things go wrong, things go awry, what do you do? Right. Well, I heard a whole bunch of things. <laughs> what, what did Katie say? <laughs> She said pray. I'm sure she did. She said pray. I'm, I'm thinking she's talking about what's called an imprecatory prayer. That's a smite of war or something like that. Oh, ships. I said ships. <laughs> oh, swear. Okay. Yeah, that's my, that's my go-to. Anybody else? Uh, what, what else we got? Huh? Complain. Okay. That's cool. Panic. Panic. One of the favorites, right? Yeah, panic. What else? What else we got? Huh? Cry? Okay, anything else? Call mom? Mm -hmm. Try and fix it on your own. Try and fix it on your own? Feel sorry for yourself. Feel sorry for yourself? Blame Twitch. Blame Twitch? <laughs> I was going to say try and fix it on somebody else. <laughs> so that, we've got a lot of go-tos, but do you notice the one that's not in the list? Pray. Because usually, while prayer should be number one, it's often number seven. After a while, we finally remember that Frank Ketchum and I have this DFTP thing that we've been using for years. Don't forget to pray. And we often send that back and forth to each other when one of us is whining. I mean, that's the idea, is that when you hear the other one whining, then you say, hey, did you pray about this? <sighs> Peter and John, so you understand the story, the context of the reading today, had been arrested by the temple police because they had caused a ruckus in the temple after the healing of a lame man. Think about that. The leaders of the followers of Jesus' community got themselves in trouble because of the healing work they were doing in the community. I have a, a crazy friend. I grew up with him in, uh, in Kenmore outside of Buffalo, New York. Uh, he is Jewish. He, he, he lives in Texas now. He's lost his mind. Uh, I love him. He was a trombone player. He's a real long hair, crazy guy. Uh, he, he said to me not that long ago uh, that all the issues with health care would be solved if only the Church of Jesus Christ took seriously its call to be the healers of broken people in this world. Pow! Biff! Bang! I think he was really just trying to get rid of the whole social services system because he's basically opposed to all taxes for caring for people. He believes in a flat tax that basically would do nothing for the poor, the disabled, or the aging. But as scary as his thinking may be, I think he may have a point. While most social services supported by taxes were created by the impulse of the Christian community trying to care for the least of these. It may be that in some ways the church has become less visible and less important and maybe less purpose-driven because it is not perceived anymore as the agency of caring that focuses on transforming a culture that is often more concerned with money than with people. That the church has instead become an old, ragged institution that is busy maintaining ancient buildings and ancient faith practices that no longer move people into a personal transformation, into bringing huge change into the lives of the world's most needy. The church has lost its center, its motivation, as the folks in the drama world would call it, its spirit. We are not the people of dramatic buildings. We are the people of dramatic acts of grace in Jesus' name, aren't we? 
So Peter and John, crazy as this is, went to the temple and healed a lame man. Think about that. But even more than that, Peter and John went into the temple to explain not only why they healed a lame man, but also to explain where the power to heal a lame man came from. From Jesus. From the Messiah. Who was dead, but is risen. And who, as the very Son of God, is now and forevermore alive and who has filled his followers with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in order that they might bring healing, real healing, to a broken world. You understand that you are the healing presence of Jesus in this world. Does your heart burn with the Holy Spirit? They believed this. That they were empowered to heal. That they had resurrection power. That they, by God's grace, could intentionally reach out and change people's lives for the better because God, through Christ, had made them the instruments of healing. So how about you? Are you an instrument of healing? In your family, in your neighborhood, in your workplace, in your school? Maybe even in and through your church. <laughs> and keep in mind, they got arrested for doing this. Part of the reason for the arrest was that they were causing a ruckus. I love that word, ruckus. I had to look it up. Ruckus, I just love it. As I mentioned at the top of the sermon, they were disrupting the normal business at the temple. Imagine disrupting the normal business at the Otisville Mount Hill Presbyterian Church. We probably wouldn't even notice. <laughs> you know? Kind of like the Deacon's 5K running through the streets of Otisville, tying up the thousands of cars in town on an early Sunday morning. <laughs> Last year we tied up three. <laughs> Another reason for the arrest was those darn Sadducees getting a bit, and I can't use the word in the text, in the text here it says pissy, but they were a bit upset about the apostles speaking positively about the resurrection. You see, they were again, and they didn't want anyone suggesting that people could be come back to life, especially that criminal Jesus. But Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit, and so they were not afraid to be who Jesus had called them to be. They were not afraid to be in the community and do what God had asked them to do. They were not afraid to take healing to the masses. They were not afraid to take healing to individuals and allow them to be raised up out of the stuff that was tying them and holding them down so that they could be whole and holy in the sight of God and begin to go into the temple. Sorry about that pillowcase. It didn't fall into the flame, did it? It might get a lot out of here. So they can go into the community and do what God called them to do. Isn't that what we're all about? And then they in the community did the most scary thing any church can choose to do on earth. Any, the most scary thing that any person can choose to do. You know what they did? They prayed. Spirit, they decided that they were to be in the community sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with anyone they could find. Is that how you see your life? Is that who you understand us to be? Let us pray. Gracious God Almighty, we thank you that you have reminded us once again in Scripture that you called us to be your presence in the world as individuals, but even more importantly, as a community of faith. We're to be making transformation real. We are to be making healing real. We are to be making caring real so that people can experience your presence incarnate in our lives. Help us become those kind of followers. Help us to pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together in our second hymn, number 34. Please. Please. 